Hey guys! Today we're going to do something new for this channel. And guess what? A photo editing tutorial! Well, let's, let's go! go! What's up, beautiful humans? Today, we're talking about how I turned this into this using Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. So we are gonna edit two photos. One casual photo with my friend Mark Reyes and one beach photo with my friend Mika Salamanca. So, to begin this editing tutorial, let's start by dragging the two photos in Adobe Lightroom. Click Import, wait for the photos to load, then select the photo that we want to edit. Okay, so let's start by zooming into the face of our subject and check out if there is any noise in the face. So obviously, there is no noise because we shot this photo in broad daylight. Let's crop this photo by 4x5, so later, we can upload it on Instagram. The next one is basic lighting adjustment. Let's start by dragging the highlights down to reveal the details in the sky. Let's add some clarity to make the photo pop a little bit. Increase the shadows by uh, something like plus 30 just to reveal some details in the shadows. Let's add some whites, about plus 20, then negative 10 blacks to add some contrast. Okay, so let's move on to noise reduction. Let's add some luminance for about plus 15 to remove some noise in the shadows. Then color noise for about 100. Then that's it. So right now, let's move to Adobe Photoshop. Just press Ctrl plus E on your keyboard, then click Open Anyway. Next, the first thing I do in Photoshop is to add some contrast and fade to the photo. So let's add some curves layer. On our first curves layer, create some S-curve until you achieve your desired look and fade to the photo. Next, I want to shift my greens to a subtle yellowish color. And to do that, let's add a channel mixer layer and on the red output channel, push the reds to 0, greens to 200, and blues to negative 100. Change the blending mode to lighten, then lower the fill of this layer to reduce the effect. Hmm, about 25%? Good. Next, let's add some saturation to the photo by creating a selective color layer. On the reds tab, push the cyans to the left because the opposite of cyan is red. See? The saturation of the skin tone increased. Next, on the yellows, push the yellows to 100. Greens are opposite of magenta, so pull this magenta to the left. Increase the cyans. Blue are opposite of yellow, so push the bar to the left. So we increase the saturation of every color except for magentas because we don't have a magenta color in this photo. So as we can see, the skin of the subject is a little saturated. So let's brush out some of the saturation using the brush tool. Decrease the flow by 20% and hardness of the brush to 0. Make sure that you selected the brush and make sure that you've uh, selected the mask of this layer then paint on the skin to remove excess saturation. Nice! Let's change the hue of the blues by creating a hue slash saturation layer then rename this layer to blues. In this layer, select blues then change the U for about negative uh, 20. Then increase the saturation for about 20 to pop those blues out. Next, I want to pop more details in the sky. So create a curves layer, pull the curves downward to the point wherein you achieve the look of the sky that you want. So in this case, I want my sky to look like this. So after that, make sure you select the mask layer of the curve that we just created then control i on your keyboard to invert the mask. Nice! Well then, select the brush, a flow of 20% and a hardness of 0. Make your brush bigger, then make sure that you've selected the white brush color. So for this case, press X, then start painting on the sky. Next, create a curves layer because I want to increase the exposure of the subject since we have a backlit shot. Let's name this as uh, face exposure and let's try to zoom into the face. Now, 
pull the curves upward from the middle to increase the exposure of the midtones. Then again, click the mask and press Ctrl plus I to invert the mask. Then let's start painting brush on the face to increase the exposure. You can paint in every part of the skin of the subject until you reach your desired exposure. Next one, I want to increase the overall exposure of the photo, so let's create an exposure layer. Let's add some vignette to the photo by creating a black solid color. Select the gradient tool and make sure that you selected the circle gradient. Click on the layer mask, click shift on your keyboard, then left click and drag downward from your subject. To see what the mask looks like, just press alt click on the layer mask, then you can increase the size of the vignette as much as you like. Change the blending mode to soft light, then brush out a little bit on the subject. Next, let's increase the light source at the back by creating a fake sun. Change the flow of the brush by 100, then first select an orangey color. Check your brush hardness and make sure it's at zero. Then click one time anywhere using your brush. Next, choose a lighter yellow color. Make your brush smaller, then again, left click once on the same spot where you put the orange color. Lastly, Select a super light color, make sure your brush is smaller again, then click on the middle of both colors. Nice! Now we have a fake light source. Then change its blending mode as green, and now let's move it on our original light source to make it pop even more. You can always drag and resize the fake light to your desired look. So as we can see, our fake sun is super saturated. So to compensate with that, Let's create a new hue and saturation layer, put it on our uh, fix sun layer. Then let's create a clipping mask by clicking the Alt button on our keyboard and left click on our hue and saturation layer. Now, decrease the saturation of the uh, fix sun by adjusting the saturation layer. And let's tweak it a little bit, just like that. Next, I want my photo to look more yellowish as a whole. So let's create another selective color layer, then go to neutral tab and at the yellow bar, I want to increase the yellows for about plus 3 and push our blues to a more yellowish tone. Next one, I want to make the skin tone of our subject pop a little more, so let's create a curves layer and name it as skin tone. Go to the red tab, zoom into the face. Then click the first button on the curves tab. Now push the reds upward to your desired look of the skin. Then go to the blue tab and always remember that in Photoshop, the opposite of blue is yellow. So let's drag these blues downward until we achieve the final skin tone that we like. Great! Now let's remove some pimple marks by using the patch tool. So to finalize our edit, click Ctrl, Alt, Shift, plus E to merge all the layers. Click Filter, then select Camera Raw Filter. Now let's tweak some basic adjustments to finally enhance our photo. When you're done, click OK. And lastly, the grass is a little saturated. So let's decrease its saturation. And viola! Here's the before. And here's our final product. Very, very nice. So before we proceed to the next photo editing tutorial, I would like to recommend a video editing software that's very easy to use, user-friendly for both beginners and professionals, and one of the best alternatives for Adobe Premiere Pro. Introducing Filmora 9. With its user-friendly interface, everything is almost click and drag and you're ready to go. Simplified color correction using the Auto Enhance tool, stunning animated titles, over 140 beautiful filters and overlays that can provide amazing look for your footages, copyright-free songs for YouTube videos, green screen, screen recording for your editing tutorials, and over 300 amazing video effects and transitions, all with Filmora 9. And regarding the price, Filmora 9 only costs 60 US dollars for a limited lifetime license.
and after that, you can access all its features for a one-time fee. So, what are you waiting for? Alright, so let's proceed to the next photo. And for this one, I'll double up the speed of some of the steps that I've already taught in the previous photo to save our time. And whenever I'll do something, I just slow it down and explain whatever I'm doing. So likewise, let's start with Adobe Lightroom and adjust the basic adjustments. So I want this photo to be a little bit warmer, so let's adjust the white balance to the right. About 10,000. Mm, nice. And we can notice that this photo is a little bit underexposed because it was shot at about 6.15 in the afternoon. That's why I bump up the shadows in the basic adjustments and we'll add the noise reduction with a luminance of 15 and the color of 100. So after that, let's proceed to Adobe Photoshop and start doing what we just did earlier. And whenever you miss a step for this tutorial, you can always pause or download the video. So as I said earlier, this photo is underexposed and has some visible amount of noise. So to remove that, I have a plugin from Nick Collection called Define2. So if you have the plugin installed, let's go to Filter, Nick Collection, then select Define2. So as the plugin opens, it detects some areas that has some noise and it automatically removes it from you. You can also do a manual noise reduction. But for this photo, an automatic removal of the noise is enough. Let's click OK, then let's continue with the editing.
And like the previous photo, let's finalize the edit using Camera Raw Filter. And that's it! Here's the before, and here's the after. Alright, so I hope that you've learned a lot from this video, and all I can say is that every person, artist, or editors has different kind and style of editing. And also, editing styles depends on the photo. Whether you're editing a portrait, a landscape, street style, lifestyle photos, travel photos, or weddings, everything is different. So yeah! Art is an expression of freedom, so you can edit your photos whatever you like. So let's respect each other, and I hope that you have a great day and God bless.